Welcome to episode 85 of the Inside Job Boards and Recruitment Marketplaces podcast. I am one of your two co-hosts, Stephen Rothberg with College Recruiter. Joined with me here today is my regular co-host, Peter Zolman. It's been a while since I've seen you, my man. No one's never called me regular before either, but that's okay. <laughs> my highly <laughs> irregular co-host, Peter Zolman. That sounds <laughs> fair to me. And a good afternoon to you. You're moving house next week. We are. And I hope it all goes smoothly. Thank you. I'm sitting in the basement of my son's house in New Jersey, where I came to visit the grandkid for a few days. And it's good to connect. So I will uh, start off with, we love it when the big boys are getting in trouble, right? Or at least, I don't know, in trouble is the right word, but there's certainly always some stuff flinging around at them. It's a little bit like when you're driving down a freeway and you see an accident and you know that you shouldn't be so interested, but you are. Yeah, something like that. So anyway, <laughs> Indeed is being sued for patent violations. A company called FlexiWorld Technologies sued saying that Four features of Indeed's web-based platform and mobile apps infringe four FlexiWorld Technologies patents related to methods and systems for mining users' data to provide services over the internet. Well, to call me a patent expert would be patently ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the only one who makes stupid puns there. Right, right. It's a competition. But, uh, yeah, the stupid pun competition. But good luck to FlexiWorld. It appears that they are not an operating company, which means that they're suing Canon over wireless printers. They're suing Amazon and Roku last year. It owns the patents, but it doesn't do anything with them. My guess is one of two things. Either Indeed will squash them pretty quickly or they'll settle pretty quickly to get rid of the nuisance value. Yeah. I'm not an expert on this stuff at all, but patent lawsuits are a dime a dozen or maybe even worse than that. Just because you have a patent does not actually mean that you own the intellectual property for it because it's it's sort of like a presumption that you own it. It's not absolute proof. And methods for data mining uh okay. As I said, I'm not an expert. Yeah. You're not an expert. I don't think Indeed and its parent company, Recruit, are quaking in their boots. Let's get to the one that's for LinkedIn has been fined $335 million or 310 million euros if you're across the pond okay. for violating GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation in the European Union. Their big operation in Ireland and Dublin, LinkedIn has pretty much all of its European operations there. Company has 30 days to appeal the decision. I'm guessing for $335 million, they're going to appeal. And let's talk more generally. Privacy is a huge issue for job boards slash recruitment marketplaces. Yeah. You probably spend a lot of time on it at College Recruiter. Why don't you talk about that for a minute? Yeah. And what it entails. So one of the things that a lot of our viewers and listeners might not really appreciate is that GDPR, although it is probably the best known privacy law, it is not anywhere close to being the only privacy law. There are over 190 different privacy laws around the world. Some are, you know, regional, like, like GDPR for the EU. Some are country specific. Some are for particular regions within a country, like California's Privacy Act law. Some of the privacy laws are impossible to comply with if you are also complying with one of the others. And so the larger the job board in terms of the geography, the more countries and markets that you operate in, the more likely it is that you're going to have to comply with multiple privacy laws. It's entirely possible. I don't know much about the, the LinkedIn lawsuit. It's entirely possible that LinkedIn was fully compliant in every respect 
and that the EU regulators are just coming down on them in a, in a wrong way. But it's also, I think, far more likely that with all of the intricacies of the privacy laws, the poorly worded legislation that a lot of them have, that LinkedIn actually was not in compliance. They may have thought they were, they may have made every effort to be, and the regulators are just looking at the legislation differently than LinkedIn does. But that's why you have courts. Well, this is interesting because LinkedIn said it's a final decision on claims from 2018 about some of our digital advertising efforts in the EU. EU. Mm. While we believe we've been in compliance with the GDPR, we are working to ensure our ad practices meet the decision by the IDPC, which is the Irish Data Protection Commission or something like that deadline. Asked whether the company intended to appeal, she added, our focus right now is on ensuring our ad practices meet this decision by the IDPC deadline. So they didn't even say they were going to appeal. It's kind of um, unusual when you get fined $335 million, but there also may be some negotiation going on, and so they don't appeal, but they settle for $150 million or Hundred twenty million. Look, you know, LinkedIn, Microsoft. Microsoft last year said it had set aside four hundred twenty-five million. Microsoft is LinkedIn's parent company. Yeah, to cover the cost of penalties arising from the case. So the four hundred twenty-five million was set aside. They got fined three hundred and thirty-five million. Hey, it's Bob Pulver, host of podcast, Human Centric AI. AI-driven transformation, hiring for skills and potential, dynamic workforce ecosystems, responsible innovation. These are some of the themes my expert guests and I chat about, and we certainly geek out on the details. Nothing too technical. I hope you check it out. Have you ever been to a webinar where the topic was great, but there wasn't enough time to ask questions or have a dialogue to learn more? Well, welcome to HR and Payroll 2.0, the podcast where those post-webinar questions become episodes. We feature HR practitioners, leaders, and founders of HR, payroll, and workplace innovation and transformation, sharing their insights and lessons learned from the trenches. We dig in to share the knowledge and tips that can help modern HR and payroll leaders navigate the challenges and opportunities ahead. So join us for highly authentic, unscripted conversations, and let's learn together. Kind of reading between the lines there, that to me sounds like somebody at Microsoft said, oops, you know, we made a mistake. We're going to have to pony up some money. Uh, you know, a year ago, two years ago, they didn't know how much it was going to be. They made a pretty conservative estimate. And the actual fine came in less than the amount of money that they set aside. And now they're talking about making sure that they're in compliance. That sure sounds to me like they got their hands caught in the cookie jar. And again, not necessarily knowingly. They may have absolutely have thought that they were fully in compliance and that the regulators are reading the law one way and the folks at LinkedIn, Microsoft, were, were reading it a different way. You know, one of the things I was hoping to talk with you about, and you kind of alluded to this, Peter, was when you were talking about job boards and recruitment marketplaces, that privacy is a big deal to us. No doubt. The AIM group also covers other classified verticals, right? Cars and autos, real estate, et cetera. Are these privacy laws as big of a deal? Oh, Absolutely. Okay. They're a very big deal. Look, it's all about your audience, whether it's recruitment, whether it's real estate, whether it's automotive, has to be confident that their information is not going to be hacked, is not going to be taken. I think it's more critical in recruitment because you've got so much yeah. personally identifiable information. And in many databases, people are required to put in their government ID number. U.S.-based job boards won't take a social security number, the legitimate ones. Chris Russell had a, a really good column about a week ago about how to tell when scammers are trying to use your job board. Mm. Uh, Chris Russell, rectechmedia.com. But it's a constant, you know, they get in, they say, oh, you got the job, we'll send you a check, and then you, you know, use it for this and that, and then they 
they want your social security number, they want your tax ID number, right. things like that. It's a constant battle for job boards and recruitment marketplaces to make sure that the scammers aren't getting a way to find people who are sometimes desperate to get a job. Mm -hmm. And it's that's not a question of the privacy laws. That's a question of scammers using mm -hmm. your sites. And that is often, often true as well with real estate sites, with automotive sites, and with the general merchandise or the stuff sites, the sites like Craigslist and Kijiji in Canada and Le Bon Coin in France, where people are, you know, person to person transactions and the risk is high. Yeah. So yeah. privacy is, is a big issue for job boards. It's also a big issue for automotive rec real estate and recruitment. We yeah. said we'd run 20, 10 minutes. We're now at 12 and a half. Yeah. So you wanted to tell the viewers oh, and, and for those yes. listening to the audio only version of the podcast about a bit of a bonus that if they want to look at, I think it was the, the LinkedIn. We'll open up okay. the LinkedIn, take it out from behind the paywall. Yeah. Uh, aimgroup.com. And if you just search for LinkedIn and privacy or some variation thereof, it is included in our recruitment intelligence report. I know Stephen is a longtime subscriber. I think I think subscriber number two, weren't wasn't I? No, you were number one. And oh. you still are number one, Stephen. Wow. But you are our first subscriber, and it's been probably four years now, and you haven't spent nearly enough in money for it, but we're glad you do. I keep sending, you know, Jonathan, uh, you know, the CEO of AIM Group, I keep sending him massive checks and he keeps telling me that he's not going to tell Peter anything about it. Oh, but maybe that's a topic for another podcast. And they're made out to Jonathan Turpin, I presume. They are personally. And he just, he just, you know, deposits them into his personal account and uh, says that Peter can, you know, go and something about jumping into a lake. Sounds fair to me. <laughs> well, good to see you. It yes. has been good to do this. Good luck with your move next week. Thank you. I will be home. I hope the hurricane debris has been cleaned up by the time I get back. Mm. It was very minor compared to what happened to a lot of people. So I consider myself remarkably lucky. Have a good week, sir. Cheers, Peter. Take care. Happy Halloween. Thanks. Bye.